A lot of love in the air on Friday night for Damien Harbrook after the Tigers hit back after their week of turmoil. That wasn't exactly what uh, Nathan Buckley was hoping to see, but thanks for coming in, Bucks. Thanks, Brian. And Chris Scott as well. Thank you. Interesting weekend uh, for both of you of different uh, reasons. Just can we talk about that bond between coach and player? As you said, it wasn't the... Obviously, you mm. would rather have been the other way on Friday night, but um, that, the, the relationship between the player, love versus like versus respect versus anything else... Oh, I think it's probably in the eye of the beholder. Like some some players will want that really strong affinity with their coach on a professional level, uh, level others on a more personal level. But um, the coaches that I've been under have been very wary to be too close to the playing group, and I think that's a danger and a trap that that coaches can fall into. But at the same time, there needs to be that emotive connection and belief that you're that you're in it together for the long haul and that you'll do whatever it takes to help each other along the journey. I can't remember. When you beat you on <coughs> at the MCG? Yeah. That was a really big moment. There's a lot of people, and us included, talking about the footy club and, and they were under pressure. After the game, was there some emotion? Can you remember? Always. Like, Always when you win. With the players? Was it, was, I, was, I don't think it was as sort of deep as that and, and, and hardy as that, but... Just because it wasn't as public doesn't mean it wasn't as deep. But <laughs> yeah. No, but that's the thing. Um, if 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 you can if the public can visualise it, well, then it seemingly means more. But the fact is that most of the stuff that would take place would be outside of the the gaze of the of the public. I think that's great. I, I, I look I, at that. I'm not, I'm not criticising. Yeah, it at all. I think I mean, it's true. And, and yeah, I do wish it was the other way. Around. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, <clears throat> but, we'll yeah but, but it is, but it is, it is good to see, um, you know, as a football observer, to see that because you, you'd like to think that um, that you're, the leaders of your football club um, are emotionally attached and invested in the players and vice versa. And uh, I think, as a supporter, you'd you'd love to see that on occasion. Um, and the fact is, you do. Like when the players put their arms around and link around each other and sing the song. I mean, that is an emotional outpouring of, you know, we've, we've done the work and now we're going to reward ourselves. And that, that's a public thing that we see every week. It's interesting. I remember Robbo asking you earlier in the year after a win if you felt a level of relief. Relief. Uh, and you know, I'll leave you to answer the question now in um, retrospect. But I look at that and that it feels to me like it's a bit of relief. Mm. For Damien Harbour. That's, mm. I've never had a win in my coaching career where I haven't felt relief. Because you go in, even to the games where you're expected to win and, and everything um, seems to be in order, as a coach, at least at, in my experience, you're thinking about what can go wrong. So when you finally get the result, it's kind of... Oh, I remember interviewing in Dennis thing. Pagan after he won the flag. I don't know which one it was, but it was the next morning after, oh, he must be oh, just relieved. <laughs> the flag. When, when, when Scotty asked you that, and I remember I asked you that question, and, and I was staggered with your response. And I'll be honest, we, we probably weren't on great terms then. But do you understand? Like, I'll be well, honest, you're probably right. <laughs> 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 but and, and, and there's got to be a level, a great level of relief, not so much for yourself, even though there's got to be. But your players who are training for a month and they're not getting any results. When they finally get a result, you think all that hard work, all those conversations, all that little bits that you've been doing, it's... So you, you yeah, it would always, it would always were... be better to get to be used to winning week yeah. after week after week after week. It would, that would be the best way to go about your footy. So you were wrong? But invariably, then, you, need to, you need to earn that week by week. So you're going to say that you were wrong to say back then? Does it, do you reckon... I'm you, going to say that. I don't know, I'm just asking. No. Um, <laughs> We're back to tension. <laughs> We're back to tension. Well, the next question's not going to help. I need to ask you... You come down one peg, mate. Uh, <laughs> I've gone up a peg. I started low. Um, let's be honest, Friday night was incredibly disappointing. Yeah. Looking at you in the, in the post-match and watching, the, watching you talk, there was a level of anger I hadn't, hadn't seen, probably frustration from mm. the performance. Does that, is that a double-barrelled anger? Because your anger at the club... The fans are angry at the team, mm. and then the fans are suddenly angry at you again because you're coach of this team mm. that's really frustrated. It was like a, a triple hit for the club on Friday night. Do you feel that, or you just concentrate on the on the, oh, on I was the performance? I was really disappointed with the with the the performance on the evening. Um, yeah, we lost the game by 15 points, and I, I thought that was probably the worst performance for the year. We we couldn't hit a target. We defended as poorly as we've defended. All year, gave, okay, up, up, up gave up 130 marks. 
up against the best, probably, defensive performance of the week before? Or why not? Um, potentially, but you know, our effort was yeah, first class in, in, the, in the West Coast game. So we've, we've um, pride ourselves and seen a consistent um, brand of our football sort of since the buy, and, and we, haven't, um, we haven't enjoyed that. We didn't enjoy that for the last four quarters. And, and as happy as the Tigers will be, um, you know, they, they, we had 39 inside 50s and we got done. You know, we had nine more inside 50s mm-hmm. and we couldn't have missed any more targets and we couldn't have defended any worse and yet we only lost the game by 15 points. So is there something in that for us? No, nah, there's no relief in that at all. But geez, we had to be bad and they were. I thought they were, you've got to give credit to the opposition. Um, I must do that because they moved the ball really they steep and, and really well and, and we were, were unable to slow them down and that was going to be the one key to the game. Did you get, was it the yeah, angriest you've been towards the players post match for the year? Um, in and with, yeah. Mm. And the coaches are, are not absolved from any of that as well because clearly there was something in the preparation that we could have adjusted or got right or done better. Um, was it, do we select the right team? I mean, all of that comes into the mix, but ultimately we went in with very similar plans to the week before. Um, uh, and, and scouted, which we weren't beaten by something we didn't know. Um, but yeah, we, we just yeah we we didn't get it done on the night. We've reviewed it today, and yeah, we want to we'll, we'll butter up and um, and on on Saturday against uh, Western Bulldogs. Yeah, we want to see a better performance. Do you care, folks? There's heaps of questions back on you as a coach, which that's what the performance did. I haven't had any questions about me since that. Do you feel that it's put pressure back on you oh, as coach? Because it's eight wins, and I don't care what you say, your injury list played a role this year because we've seen you with your better teams. We, we talk about, so we're allowed to talk about North, we're allowed to talk about the dogs, but we don't mention it with you because you say, no, 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 we're not, we're not talking injuries. Injuries have played a part, but the facts of the matter is, you have eight wins mm. and 11 losses, and, and everyone keeps talking about that drop, and it's dropped again. Yep. And people are saying, Bucks, what's, what's happening? What are you doing to this football club? Did Friday night, I don't know, put another... Well, it would have been better for it to one. But you didn't. That way. No, yeah, we you did. didn't. No, we didn't. Do you feel pressure or not? Or not on, on your, do you feel pressure on your absolutely. position? Or are you absolutely... No, I absolutely yeah. feel pressure. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I can't allow it to stress me because if it stresses me, it stresses the, the players. If it stresses the players, it stresses the club. And if, that, if we introduce that to your preparation, let alone your performance, you're not going to optimise it. There are, there are things that we're doing well behind the scenes. There are things that, we're, that are starting to come through, things that we've done well over the last couple of years that are coming through in our, in our players, in our performances. But we're still not as consistent as we'd like to be. Some of that is... Um, oh, it's multifaceted. But I was talking on the way in, and we'll talk about the Melbourne Hawthorne game eventually, Jared pre- presented a stat at, um, into the bye saying the teams that were in the bottom 10 and how often they'd beaten teams in the top eight. And it was only a handful of games. Yeah, it was. And apparently there was going to be 50 more of those and we were never going to see... We weren't going to see a bottom 10, 10 mm. side beat a top eight side for the back half of the year. Well, it's happened six times now that Melbourne have done it. Two of those have been us. We've knocked over GWS and West Coast. So our best footy, even with that decimated list... Um, and 22 and, and players that we haven't had available, we've still played a brand of footy that's been able to beat some pretty good sides well, across the year. Hurt you so but much. we're not consistent enough mm. yet. And you can't be a good team until you're consistent. So we're still proving the ability to do that. Um, and that's, that potentially may be the, the toughest thing of all of being a good team, is to improve your bottom level. Like Feels like there's a few changes going on in the assistant coaching world at the moment and the number of teams. Are you, are you looking for the teams that haven't made it? Are you already starting? There's reports that your, old, your mate Brenton Sanderson might be joining you next year. Yeah, and, and I think every club out of the finals will have a bit of a... I oh know, I was going to say they have a bit of a jump on sides that are preparing for finals, but that would be saying that clubs can't walk and chew gum at the same time. I think most of the clubs would be going through some form of analysis of what's working for us, what's not, how can we be better, Um, and the Coaches Association in their wisdom um, and really for the benefit of their constituents have asked clubs to notify assistant coaches on where they sit around August 1 as a date, and and I think it's a great ideal 
Um, I think in practice it probably throws up a few more problems than it, than it may solve, but those conversations have taken place behind closed doors and they should stay there. Penelby a little bit better than first thought? Yeah, we thought he'd really hurt himself um, and he, he, he injured himself, but uh, you know, we thought... Looked innocuous, We feared it? that he had actually broken a bone in his foot, but that he had that all clear this morning. But, you know, Pendles is a... You know, I mean, as Scotty would know, there's, there's guys in your team that just seem to perform regardless of, of what they carry in, and, you, and the outsiders would never know. Well, you can presume to know, but you never know. But um, as far as where some of the things that he works through the week with and still goes out and performs on, on the weekday is um, to, be, to be beheld. Any word on Swanee yet? No. No, nothing new. Uh, Fasolo's gone, though, for the rest of the season. Yep. Uh, what about Michael Hurley? Any, any interest in him, like probably everyone else, if he's not going to be a bomber? Yeah, he's a pretty good player, isn't he? Yep. Imagine if you said no. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. not interested yeah. in Michael Hurley. No, don't, don't want him at St. Up back. No. Of course they I want think, him. Um, of course they want yeah, him. I think every club wants him. Yeah, every club who would like a... A ready-made key defender, to lock, in and lock and load. All Australian would be um, would be pretty keen. So on. tomorrow, Collingwood makes his bid for Michael Hurley. That's, <laughs> that's what it sounded like. <laughs> yeah, that's what I read. Uh -huh.